Hi, I'm Eric, and this is Paul. And tonight we're going to fix Paul's broken generator. Again. Uh, no, not again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe the first time for this, but not, yeah. not the first time here. Uh, so he had, uh, yesterday tried to do some uh, maintenance start on it, make sure that it would actually start and run if he were to need it, since we're starting to get some bad weather. And it would start, run for a few seconds, and shut off. And uh, come to find out, the problem was that the oil was overfilled, and it was overfilled with fuel. So uh, most likely it's a carburetor problem, where fuel is uh, dumping from the carburetor into the engine, being down to the crankcase. Uh, so tonight we're going to pull the carburetor apart, take a look at it, and see if we can't fix that. So that when the weather is bad and the power does go out, uh, it'll actually start and run when we need it. Um, so yeah, should be exciting. Step one. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we're going to do here is take the crankcase breather off, which doubles as a uh, oil drain, so that we can drain some oil. Drain all the oil out, actually. Yeah. Do I undo this? What are you undoing? The hipstick. Oh, yeah. That won't hurt. Probably, probably help. All right, and that is some pretty and thin... And it's draining! Yeah, Just some like... pretty thin oil there. <laughs> probably because it's mixed with fuel. All right, so we got oil, all the oil drained, so now I'm just going to reconnect that breather tube slash drain hose. <laughs> that is weird, isn't it? Tighten the clamp back up on that. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take off the cover for the uh, air intake. Um, behind here, eventually we'll get to the carburetor. Uh, but by taking this off, this is going to be our best access. Alright, so now we do need to pull off these six nuts. And behind these, this, this uh, cover is kind of multi-layered. So you got to pull off the exterior cover. And then we can pull off these six nuts. And then behind that, we can get to the two uh, bolts on the carburetor that hold the rest of the cover on. Uh, so it will be free and clear there. All right, now that I have the, uh, the intermediate cover off, we can take off these nuts on the carburetor and pull the inner cover off. And then we'll be at the carburetor. Got a hose hanging on here. There we go. And there's our carburetor. Alright, so now we're going to remove the carburetor so we can put on the bench and actually work on it, see what our problem is. So turn this um, guy around here, pull it back. This is our fuel line, which actually the fuel is on right now. I'm going to shut that off before I pull this out. And also grab my drain pan because we're probably going to lose a little bit, that's okay. Slide that line off. And actually, this is also a good time to uh, test our uh, shutoff valve. Right now it's off and there's no fuel draining, so that's good. Let's turn it on. And we've got very nice fuel flow. So that's good. Quick little test that we ought to do just while we're in here. Got a little bit of residual fuel still draining out. That's okay. Tuck this up out of the way. So now, a couple of pieces to the carburetor. See if I can get this apart without damaging any gaskets. And of course, since I said that, the gasket came apart. It did say it right? Well, that's okay because it's not my engine. <laughs> and I'm going to pull this carburetor right off of its pins. Gently, because we still have some things attached to it that I don't want to bend or break, even though it's not mine. That would be good. All right, now we're loose here. 
Uh, you got some kind of electrical sensor on the bottom. Um, so I'm going to have to grab a Phillips screwdriver. I'm going to grab me a Phillips. I'm not sure what the sensor is, but we want it off. And it looks like our bowl must have been full because fuel is draining out of here. And that's fine. It's cleaning things out because it's clean gas. Oh, if my assistant fished that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sensor off, carburetor off. So now we can take this to the bench, take it apart, and uh, clean it out, and put it back together. All right, so now we have the carburetor out and on the bench. So I'm going to pull the bowl off of it and see what we've got inside. It's too small. That's too small. Is it 9 sixteenths? Yeah, 9 sixteenths. Just right. I, I think I work with jokers. Uh, Alright, so this is a banjo fitting. Uh, you can see that there's a hole on the top, that's where fuel comes into the carburetor, and there's holes on the, uh, the, the top is where fuel comes into the bowl. The, uh, well, geez, no. The, uh, how does this work? The top is where fuel goes to the jet, and the sides is where fuel goes from the bowl into the banjo fitting. And this works kind of as a regulator for how much fuel can go into the engine. So make sure we clean that up good, make sure there's no gunk in there while this is apart. So then, with the bowl off, Let's see, and that gasket, it's just a rubber seal that looks like it's okay. Uh, so in here, in the center, is the jet, and this is the float. When a, so it's normally sitting like this. When the bowl is full of fuel, uh, it pushes the float up. The float just has air in it, and it's sealed, so it pushes the float up. When the float is pushed up, so now it's upside down, uh, there's a needle hiding straight down in here. Uh, here's the fuel inlet, so that needle seals off the fuel inlet when this float is pushed upward. Uh, so I want to take this roll pin out so I can take the float off. And there's our needle and the tip of it looks pretty black. And that may, it's pretty uniform so it's probably actually just a coating. Um, and I can see there's a little bit of corrosion on the side of that. And let's see. Uh, brass inside of that bore and it really doesn't look too bad. So we'll clean it all up while we're here, put it back together, make sure it's sealed properly, uh, clean the jet out, but then uh, I think we're going to run just fine after that. Alright, so since we've come this far, while this is apart, I'm going to pull the jet out so we can clean that. Put everything back together. And the uh, uh, the needle for the float uh, maybe had a little bit of corrosion on the seat. The needle actually has a, a rubber tip on it, uh, so that doesn't have corrosion. Uh, but clean the seat up. I'm going to pull the, uh, the jet out the bottom now. Try to. We can clean that out. There we go. So that's the actual jet there. And it doesn't look too bad, actually. Alright, so get you on the camera a little bit closer here. So this is the jet that I just pulled out of the carburetor. And here's the top. This, this uh, edge where it's a little bit different color, that's what's exposed uh, where the air is blowing by. Um, and this just has a bunch of little holes in the sides of it. But they all look pretty clean. And then a passageway through it. And that actually looks... Uh, Nice and clean too. So not a lot of uh, corrosion in there. I think it's okay to just kind of give a little bit of a touch with emery cloth and uh, put it right back in. So that's good. All right. So this piece here is the uh, retainer that holds the jet into the carburetor. Put the jet back in there. But this is the plug the retainer that holds it in. And uh, it looks like it may have, it's kind of hard to see through it here. Let's see if we can find some reflective behind it. But it looks like it may actually be a little 
plugged up, a little restricted there. So I'm going to run some wire through that, clean it out, and uh, make sure that's not going to be a problem either before we put this back together. Let's use some stranded wire here, ream that out. I've got a couple of strands there, two wrapped together. Here's three strands. I think I'll be able to fit three through here. Oh yeah, that's that feels like there's some more oh, resistance. So I'll just work it back and forth and the uh, edges of those strands rubbing against the, the side of this um, brass uh, fitting uh, will wear off any kind of uh, corrosion that's on the surface and make it flow better. Yeah, it feels like it's actually rubbing quite a bit smoother now. Alright, open that right up. Alright, so I reamed uh, that plug out and you can see uh, quite easily that now it's actually uh, pretty good to see through. Let's see if I can get us focused a little bit better. Yeah, so now as I move around you can see, you know, different colors coming behind it. Uh, so I think that could have likely been our problem here. Uh, doesn't explain why we had so much fuel in the crankcase. That could have still been a needle that wasn't uh, seating properly. Um, maybe it's just been too long since we've done maintenance on this. Um, but I think that this is actually the problem for why the engine was only running a couple seconds installing. I don't know if the oil was so overfilled that it would keep it from running. Uh, so let's get this back together and uh, we'll get it running tonight. You are live. So now we're going to add uh, some oil back. And it's not very expensive oil because we're going to run it for a few hours and take it right back out. Yep, and then put some, uh, some 30 weight full synthetic in it. Can you see where set you it are? down and see where the. Yeah, so we're trying is. to add a quart. But yeah, that's oh, like you, you've, no, you barely moved. You're you're just below the oh. uh, the line where we started. I think you've put like not even a quarter of a quart in there. It did say in the owner's manual. Here's some towel if you need it. That you could actually see it. In there. Oh, you can see the oil when it's at the right level. Yeah, so it looks like it needs a little bit more. But I don't know. This is the cantankerous top by our med. There. It's about almost halfway up. Alright, well, that's good. To full, so. Yeah, if it's halfway up the cross hatching, I'd say we could add a dab, but it's okay where it is. Yeah, we can We're going to run it and dump it anyhow. Right. We could run it for a little bit just to make sure it runs. So. All right. So we pulled the carburetor apart. Uh, turns out I don't believe it was actually a needle uh, that was corroded. Uh, the needle seemed to be sealing fine. Uh, I'm not sure why we had all that fuel in the crankcase, but um, maybe it was slipping past the needle, but it wasn't a problem tonight. Uh, but we did find that the jet was plugged, or actually the, um, the fitting that holds the jet in place was almost completely plugged up, so clean that out. Uh, I think that now once we turn the fuel back on and give this a crank, I think it's going to fire up and run just fine. Uh, so let's give it a try. Uh, let's fuel. see. Fuel is on. All right. Battery's on. Yep, I'm going to get out of the way here a little bit. Oh. Was the battery dead? It shouldn't be. Do I have
house. And then I'll turn that off. Alright. I didn't tighten up the nuts. Oh, on the battery? Gotcha. Yeah. Alright, give it another <laughs> Running, so another one fixed. Don't forget to turn the uh, gas off.